Good afternoon, YouTube. Let me get right down to this. I had another vision last two nights ago. And I wanted to post it earlier, but I've been working on things on this phone to try to make my videos a little more interesting for you so you know you don't get bored or anything. But I'm going to try to make it quick and simple. I had another vision. I had a dream. I was running through seemed like an apartment complex and I was with some of my family members and we were running through places looking for things for us to find because there was a war going on outside and the places that we were going into had already been ransacked by somebody else um, we came to a room uh, and we were looking around for things in this room going through all the drawers and stuff but it already had been ransacked too there was a window in this room I uh I kept running to the window to see to look outside when I ran out to the window I looked and there was something in the clouds there was just I could only see one from my view but it was something that looked like it was blended into the cloud but it was planted in the cloud like it was wasn't going anywhere it's gonna stay right there and I could kind of picture something was touching the ground from it and something was going all the way up into the sky like it just planted itself in the middle of the sky and uh, I remember looking up at that thing in the sky I could kind of picture something was touching the ground from it and something was going all the way up into the sky like it just planted itself in the That is so weird. What? The wind is blowing toward the storm. That is weird. You want to... Rachel, want to see something cool? And uh, I remember looking up at that thing in the sky and trying to discern what it was. But and I left the window and I ran back and I was trying to get my family members to come on. I was like, "We gotta hurry up. We gotta come on." But uh, you know, what happened was uh, I was trying, I was like in the room. Come on, y'all. We gotta get out of here. And I ran back to the window and looked again. The thing was still in the sky. And I looked down, and there was uh, people running around there shooting guns and robbing and looting and stuff. I didn't know what was going on. But uh, I ran back into the room, looked around. It's like, all right, we're out of time, y'all. We got to go. Ran back to the window again. So but this time it was kind of weird because I, I clicked on a light right before I went to the window. And when I did that, I looked downstairs. And it was, it was like soldiers with a bunch of little kids, like brainwashed little kids. And 
they all looked up and, and the little kid started pointing at me in the window. And it was like, they didn't say nothing, they were just pointing at me. And I noticed they had seen where I was in this window and I shut the window and I remember trying to scramble out of there and getting down to the street. And I remember people were running everywhere and some, I was hearing gunshots and stuff, but I, you know, and this thing was still in the sky and stuff. And I woke up and I was like, it's like, a, that was pretty wild right there. But let me get back to you in one second here. So anyway, YouTube, I had this dream and then I went one day and then not last night but the night before I was sitting there watching uh, YouTube videos and I came across a commercial a previews for a new TV show on Sci-Fi Network coming out called Childhood's End and what I seen in that preview eluded to what I saw in my dream. The military was using kids somehow, brainwashed kids, and the kids were helping the military to find people. But I don't know if that's what the childhood at end is about, but I just saw the preview of the same looking thing in the sky that was stuck in the cloud and kids and soldiers trying to help the soldiers, the demonic entities, but this is real warfare, folks. We are really at spiritual war. They're watching us all the time. They're controlling the way we think. He said that they're here to help us. Mr. Storm Grinches, tell us, why won't Corellin show us his face? The Earth has a new destiny. I want to know why they're here and what they have in store for us. Tell them the truth about what you really are. Hey guys, it's KJ from the Scariest Movie Ever channel on YouTube. This video right here is by far one of the most requested videos I've ever had since I've been doing this here on YouTube. It's all about a new miniseries that came out on the sci-fi channel called Childhood's End. Now, I wanted to watch the entire six-hour miniseries before I did this video, and I actually finished watching it just yesterday. And there is a lot of really interesting things to pick apart here. I believe the reason that so many of you told me about this show and were requesting a video on it is because you know that I've been covering this subject for years. And that's the idea that aliens, quote-unquote, are actually the devil and his fallen angels. It's all part of a deception. I have a whole playlist on this called Alien Demon Deception if you're interested. But this is certainly a subject I've covered for years. Certainly this is a part of the Elite's plan, you can call it the Illuminati's plan, you know, whatever uh, label you want to put on that. But we are definitely being prepared for some kind of alien visitation. And they're setting the narrative now, they've been doing it for years. And I personally believe that when it happens, they are going to sell us these aliens as our saviors or our space brothers and sisters. So I'm going to pick apart the six hour miniseries. I'm just going to show you a few things in there I thought were very interesting. But what's most important is we're going to go beyond that. We're going to look into Arthur C. Clarke a little bit as well and his connections to all of this occultism. It's a trip. Fall 1992. Okay, check this out, y'all. This is like a straight Illuminati almanac right here. You know, IBM, the old IBM commercials. I'm going to show y'all some real subliminal stuff, some real Illuminati stuff going on in this. And this is just the first page about IBM services, but... There's some secret messages hidden in here, like kind of like whistleblowers on on the on the low. Now that's uh, Sir Arthur C. Clarke right there. 
He uh, is a scientific, scientific novel writer and a futurist is what he calls himself. I have a whole video all about this magazine, but I don't think I really went over it how I wanted to. But check this out, y'all. Fall 1992, volume 140, number 27. The Millennium. So these, this, this Time magazine here was pretty much based off of people's thoughts of what the future holds. And they went around and asked the whole world, what do you think about the year beyond the year 2000? And they got so much Illuminati stuff in here. Look at this here. A millennium at a glance. Let me start from right here. The great event, a moment to marvel. Now see this great event that they're talking about? They want you to think they're talking about the great event of the year 2000. But that's not the great event that they're talking about. They're talking about the tribulation, pretty much. Millennium shines with immense psychological power. It promises a new age or an apocalypse. See what I mean? Where's number seven at? Oh well. The big blowout. So, so what if it's still more than seven years away? We're gonna go through this, y'all. The future poll, Americans speculate on the second coming and other mysteries. Looking back, it must be Columbus. Out of the darkness, the current millennium was dominated by the rise of Europe and the triumph of the West for good and ill. Mostly for ill. Millennium at a glance, a gatefold timeline puts a thousand years into perspective. You guys should see this timeline too. Our astonishing era, the 20th century brought in an explosion of change and an onslaught of high technology. Oh yeah, it did. From the year 2017 to you. Let's see here. The century ahead, hmm. That's a, a funny looking device type Illuminati pyramid slash mouse slash probably tracks the mark of the beast in you. Into the future, the future will be complex, fast paced and turbulent. Will we be ready? Oh, well, what comes after Into the Unknown? Look at this. The New World Order. With militarism ending, all the big questions will be basically economic. Yeah, it gets deep, y'all. Higher tech. Here comes intelligent machines, multi-sensual media, and highly evolved artificial creatures. Hmm. Cultism and these esoteric ideas. What's most important, I believe, to understand about all of this is how old this story is. And this is from 1953. Childhood End is actually a 1953 science fiction novel by the British author Arthur C. Clarke. And the story follows the, quote, peaceful alien invasion of Earth by the mysterious overlords, whose arrival begins decades of apparent utopia under indirect alien rule, ultimately at the cost of human identity and culture. Another thing we cover here on the channel is Illuminati symbolism, as one term for it, or a symbolism of the beast system. And what do you see right here on this cover of this book from, remember, 1953? Once again, we have that all-seeing eye, right? We have the beast system eye, the Illuminati eye. It's right there. I mean, this is 50, 60, 70 years ago almost now. 
we can even look right here. Once again, there's just another version of the book Childhood's End. And what do we have? That's right, more of the all-seeing eye symbolism, the one eye symbolism, the Illuminati eye. And this is the stuff we're seeing all the time right now in our culture, right? Remember, this is 60, almost 70 years ago. They were putting this stuff out there. And again, you can look at another version of the book. And what is it we have here again on the cover, but the all-seeing eye, of course, with the red and the uh, slit pupil. The timing was very interesting to me. If you look at my channel and see several of the last videos I've done, once again, it's all about them preparing us for this alien invasion or this alien contact. And I believe it's going to be a great deception. And what you're looking at right here, this is one of the main aliens. They called him, I think it was Krillian or Killian, something like that was his name, but they call him the supervisor of Earth. There's other creatures that look just like this. And of course, this is the stereotypical look of the devil, right? In the beginning, he finds a messenger. This is his messenger right here. This is just one of the shots, but it's interesting. I've also covered mirrors recently and how mirrors can be portals between this world and the next. And even in the show, the way that the messenger is talking to this alien demon is through a mirror. This is the way they contact, is through a mirror. This is the way that they communicate with each other. It's the very beginning of the series. And it's interesting because as the series plays out, these uh, demon aliens are seen as very much godlike. You know, there's crime in the world when they first show up. At one point, a little boy gets shot and killed. And just within moments, you know, the, rawr, the rays come down from the spaceship and they heal the little boy and he comes back to life. Everything's good again. One of the most startling scenes in the series is whenever they first introduce the alien, right? And of course, right here it is. The whole world at this point is waiting to see what these things are. They've been kind of hovering above the Earth and spaceships for a while, and now we're actually going to get to meet them. And this was definitely one of the most startling scenes right here, is when this alien is revealed. And of course, it doesn't look like any kind of alien we've ever seen, right? It looks much more like the devil. And here's a clearer picture of it. You can hear Krillian's voice at one point actually calling for children to come up and lead him down. And I know some other people have covered this symbolism as well, because this was pretty crazy right here. But when you look at this, what do you see? Is there anything in recent memory you can think of that, that this reminds you of? Perhaps a statue? That's right. Remember the statue right here? This is from the Satanic Temple. And this is the statue that they put up in Detroit that they were hoping to put up in Oklahoma. And who knows where eventually it's going to wind up being. But as I said in the videos I produced about this statue, is this is just the beginning. For the last several years, I've been talking about this stuff, this dark awakening. I mean, there really is no, an awakening happening. All kinds of people around the world are waking up to this stuff, the darker elements and the lighter elements. You know, some people are growing closer to God, and some people are growing in defiance of him. Isn't it interesting that we have this story? And it's a fairly recent, just over the last several months, about this Baphomet statue. And then right here in the show, <laughs> there it is again, right? It's also very interesting the way that they handle Krillian and uh, the other aliens, if you want to call them that. They're not outwardly evil. You know, at times they actually seem fairly kind, you know, benevolent. I mean, they give the Earth 20 years of complete and total peace and safety, right? All the food they need, there's no more fighting, all that stuff. So in the beginning, they seem like they're pretty good guys, you know? They're not here to hurt anybody. They're taking care of us. You know, they're looking out for us. Scattered throughout the series is more so-called Illuminati symbolism. Right here is one of them. It was the huge sun theater right here. And I've mentioned this in other videos as well. It's always about the sun symbolism. This goes back to sun worship, the worship of Lucifer. And it can also be used subtly as the whole Jesus is Horus and all that stuff. We're all just worshiping the sun, right? There are a lot of really interesting layers to this miniseries. I'm going to try not to spoil too much for you if you ever actually want to watch this. I was surprised how well made it was, seeing as how it was on Sci-Fi Channel. I always figured Sci-Fi Channel was Sharknado and just stuff like that, but this was actually a really well done miniseries here. So in this story, religion completely dies, and not just religion, but faith in God. And any talk of Jesus is completely out the door. These alien beings are truly Earth saviors in this story, and that's the way that all of the Earth look at them, as their saviors. And again, this is a subject I've talked about in a lot of these videos as well. That is going to be a very real issue 
when and or if these things actually show up, however it is that the powers that be want to introduce these things to us someday, that millions upon millions upon millions of people will be deceived. The girl over on the left is like the last Christian person left in the world, basically. <laughs> At least that's what it seems like in this miniseries. And she's still trying to fight for her faith. But this was interesting right here. The lady she's talking to on the right is married to the man that became the messenger in the beginning of the series. And she's explaining to the Christian lady that what we have now is better than God. Because in the past she said all we used to do was just cry and pray and it just went to some abyss, is what she said. It went nowhere. God never answered. And now, well now we've got these guys up here in the sky and they're taking care of us. No one's fighting anymore. Everyone's getting along. We have all the food we need and everything's cool. Everything's great. So we really don't need God. I won't tell you exactly what happens to that girl, the last Christian girl, but I will say that a large amount of the religious community you find out through this miniseries actually just killed themselves. They just killed themselves. Once this all happened, once these alien saviors came down, all of their faith, everything was just destroyed. So a lot of these people didn't know what to do themselves, so lots of these people just gave up, gave in, and killed themselves. Another one of the main characters is a scientist. His story is really interesting. Again, throughout this, I don't want to spoil too much. You should check it out. But he was a scientist, and he's aware of what this stuff is. He's one of the few people that gets it, you know, that sees that this really is the devil. This is the devil and his minions. And they're all coming in the guise of these alien saviors and being our friends. And he knows that something bad's coming. He's just not sure what it is yet. And speaking of the, again, so-called Illuminati symbolism, or the all-seeing eye, or the one eye, well, here it is again. There's so many people out there that think this stuff is stupid. Ah, it doesn't mean anything. It's just, ah, it's just, you know, it's coincidence. Guys, this is not a coincidence. You know, once again, here's the all-seeing eye. And what that is right there in the middle is kind of like a Ouija board type thing they use to communicate with the alien saviors. This part was interesting here, too, because this is when the bad stuff starts happening. You know, in the beginning, it all seems great. You know, it's all peace and love and all that stuff. But it was around this time when they started utilizing this machine that things start going a little bit crazy. I mean, guys, this is not a coincidence, okay? I mean, I mean, this is not a coincidence. Again, right here, you got the all-seeing eye, right? You got the one eye. Let's go back about 70 years. Oh, look, hey, there it is again. Oh, look, and again. Oh, look, and again, and countless more, and countless more examples you've seen here on my channel and other channels of this stuff manifesting more and more. We see this symbolism everywhere now. So it's interesting here, because as she's doing this communicating or whatever, something happens to her unborn child. She's pregnant, right? Some kind of a communication between her using this weird contraption and dealing with these alien saviors above. Something happens to her. I didn't get a picture of it, but later you see her giving birth, and the baby's eyes, as the camera kind of turns away for a second, suddenly flicker and change colors. So you realize that this is a hybrid baby. And this is half human and half them, right? But it's this whole idea of all these fallen beings wanting to mate with the humans, somehow combining their DNA with ours. And then there was a whole sequence right here I want to show you, and it's very interesting. Once again, filled with so-called Illuminati symbolism, right? But here we have the little girl. Now the little girl right here in the reflection, that's like a piece of a mirror, of course shaped like a pyramid with the light behind her. So here you have your pyramid and eye. That little girl right there is the daughter of the lady that was messing around with that machine and all that stuff, right? So we have this little girl. And she winds up being kind of the conduit between them and us. And this girl turns out to be a very powerful being. At one point that scientist is having a discussion with her. And this is that sequence right here. And he's talking to her. He's talking to her. And then again, well, here comes more symbolism. He's got this picture right here. And he keeps asking her, what is this? What is this? Where is this? What is this? I mean, what is that? Well, once again, guys, a huge pyramid with the all-seeing eye, right? And as I said, this stuff is not a joke. A lot of people think, ah, it's just, it's coincidence. No, okay? This stuff is being revealed all the time right now. So anyway, back to the show. So he's sitting here showing her this picture. He's asking her, what is this? You know, where is this? What is this? And then all of a sudden, all the computer equipment goes crazy, and there's some kind of crazy energy goes through the room, and everything kind of goes nuts. And the very last shot in that sequence before they went to the commercial was this right here. It was the little girl 
in a pyramid. You don't see the top there, but it was in the pyramid with the light behind her. And she says, now the end begins. Cut to black, right? And that was the commercial. And that's when we start getting into what these beings were really all about, why they were here. And it wasn't just to, like, be nice to humans. So this right here is after about 20 years of all that peace and love and everything's going cool and there's no problems on the earth. This right here is the moment where this devil creature tells the world what's really going on. And basically he says that the earth will no longer be giving birth. No new babies are going to come into the earth and we're going to take all of your children with us now. And that's exactly what they do. So all the kids all around the world start kind of floating up in the sky. It almost looks like a rapture type event and they all fly up in the sky up to the spaceships and disappear. Even women who are pregnant, their babies suddenly are just gone. So these things take all of the children, all the new life off of the earth. And they say, hey, you know, you guys can still live out your life. Everything's fine. We're not going to mess with you. Good luck. And that's it. <laughs> and that's it. So after all the kids are off of the earth, you see one of the ships going away. One of the things I didn't tell you is that scientists had managed to get himself aboard one of these ships, right? So they kind of show you these creatures planet. Once again, you know, the whole time, the whole idea is, oh, they're just aliens. They don't really go too much into the devil stuff or too much into the biblical stuff. Not a lot. You know, they're still trying to sell it as aliens. But that's where I'm telling you the show's very subtle because they do show you everything you need to know, especially when they start approaching their planet. And this right here is what it looks like. And that looks very much like, you know, traditionally, what some people may say looks like a hell, right? And it very much is. I mean, as you're going through this, it's crazy. It's, an, it's a huge ocean of fire and brimstone and smoke, and it's just not a very happy-looking place. So this here was near the end, and they were kind of having a discussion. They find the scientists. Like I said, they don't even hurt him. They don't kill him or anything like that. They actually say, if you want to just live here with us, you can live here with us. But he wants to go back to the Earth. You know, that, that's where he's from. And that's pretty much it. That's most of the stuff I wanted to cover with the actual mini-series. I don't want to spoil anything and tell you what happens in the very end. But needless to say, you know, these space saviors, they're not good guys. <laughs> they were bad guys. They were very clever. And it's interesting the way that they just kind of lulled the world into this, into accepting all this stuff. So whenever we're trying to decipher symbolism, one thing I always talk about is, you know, symbols can mean a lot of different things, but it's always most important to go back to the beginning. Go back to what its first incantation was, you know, what it really used to mean, and then we see over time how it takes on new meanings. Or at least it's sold to us, these symbols, to take on different and new meanings. But still, but still, that original meaning remains. It's the same in a case like this. You know, instead of just watching the series and kind of talking about what I saw in there, I wanted to go back a little further. So let's go back to Arthur C. Clarke. What's interesting is if you start looking into Arthur C. Clarke, a lot of very, very interesting things start turning up. And by very interesting things, I mean lots of connections to the occult, lots of connections to the esoteric, connections to, if you will, the Illuminati. Let me show you a few things here. This right here is an older news story about the Chelsea Hotel. You may have heard of the Chelsea Hotel. There's all kinds of history there. There's something here that I wanted to show you that was very, very interesting. Right here it is. You see right here that Chelsea was built in 1883 and became a hangout for artists during the 1930s. Marilyn Monroe and Arthur Miller honeymooned there, and Andy Warhol found his muse. In room 322, Arthur C. Clarke wrote 2001, a space odyssey. And as many of you out there already know, that 322 is the number for the Illuminati Skull and Bones Society. It's just an American branch of this Illuminati. And we call it Illuminati, you know, but to me, once again, that's just a coverall. It's a catchphrase, really, for, if anything, for these secret Satanists. All these people, all these different groups, these secret societies that are involved in that pyramid system are all working towards the same goal. And that's a new world order, one world system, right? A one world leader. In the first few seconds of the film 2001 A Space Odyssey, the screen is completely black. And from this, we are to know that we are seeing the obelisk that will appear throughout the film. This all-black screen is the obelisk, so we are in the dark in the beginning, profane and ignorant of the light. 
The obelisk represents Lucifer, xenophobia, the mysterious, the unknown, technology. The illuminated, quote-unquote, powers of the cosmos, or the fallen angels, have sent this black obelisk where humanity is purportedly at the level of ape. And there may also be double meanings there where the audience, who had at the beginning been shown to be in the dark, is not presented as like apes, you know, dumb, unenlightened apes. This should show the disdain and hate for humanity that some of these occultists actually have. The film's main theme, though, simply put, is human evolution. That may sound innocuous to some of you out there, but this actually cloaks a deeper, darker agenda. An occult agenda where man evolves to become God. Thank <laughs> you.